close voicing. This is really the why that follows learning inversions. It's why use them. What is their purpose in a real musical situation? So to demonstrate this, I've taken a beautiful little tune off the latest Iron and Wine album. Uh, it's called Joy. The album's called Ghost on Ghost. And it sets up a chord pattern uh, of A minor, D, G major, D, E minor, A minor, D, and then E major. So let's get this written up. We're going to create some backing vocals, and to do so, we're going to first create root position triads based on these chords. So we'll start with an A minor for the bar, and then we'll go down to the D, and the F sharp of the D is covered by the F sharp key signature. Then we'll go to chord one, G major, back to the D, and then up to E minor, may as well put stems on these two so they fit into a 4-4 four, four bar. So we've got our E minor, then we'll go up to our A, down to our D, and then for the E major, do you see there's not the little M as there was here, so for this E major, we need to add an accidental, which is to sharpen that middle note to make G sharp. And then that will tie over to the second bar. Now, I'm going to use the Boss looping pedal to record me singing R backing vocals on these chords, and let's listen to the musical effect of using root position chords. Here is my bottom part. Uh, 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 let's add in the middle part. Uh, Top part. Do you see and hear how every part jumps down to the D, up to the G, down to the D, up to the E? sing the vocal melody over it. Deep inside the heart of this troubled man, there's an itty bitty boy tugging hard at your hand. Born bitter as a lamb, but you must understand that you've been bringing me joy. And I'll only lie when you don't want the truth. I'm only frightened cause you finally gave me something to lose And it's as loud as a thunderclap and you hear it too But now you're bringing me joy Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing illegal or even immoral about having such movement between your parts but it's not helping us for a couple of reasons musically. Number one is that it actually makes it quite difficult to sing. When we drop down that fourth, every part had to drop down a fourth from the A minor to the D, uh, that was pretty tricky to sing. And if we didn't have as much movement, uh, the vocalists would actually find it easier to sing and therefore possibly sing it more expressively. The other thing is that this may be tapped into some deep evolutionary thing in the human species. We are trained to notice movement. 
It might come from you know, needing to stay alive, being chased by saber-toothed tigers or whatever. If something moves, we notice it. If it doesn't move, after a while, we just suppress it a little bit because there's so much other information in our environment to take in. And in fact, for a backing part, we want it to recede a bit. We want the listener to not be so aware of it all the time so that they can concentrate on the lead vocal, which is delivering us the story. So let's look at a close voiced version of this. You'll see I've started off with A minor, not in root position, but in second inversion, which is going to just give me a, a lower start point so that it doesn't rise too high. And also, just to help the part not to rise too high, I've plotted out my soprano line first. So it's going to start on the C, rise to the D, stay on the D as long as it can, rise to the E, stay on the E, rise to the F sharp, and back down to the E. My middle part needs to stay on the A, that's for the D chord, which is D, F sharp, A. G chord is G, B, D. So let's bring it up to the B and then back down to its A for the D chord. Then rise to the B again for the E minor. Uh, it could come up to the C here for the A minor. It could go to the D here for the D major, D F sharp, and then drop down to the B for the final E chord. And then for the bass, let's just fill in what's required. So a D major chord is D, F sharp, and A. We haven't got an F sharp yet, so that one goes there. E to F sharp, that makes sense. The G chord doesn't actually have a G in it at the moment. G, B, D, so that's going to be a G there. That D chord is the same as the last one, so the bass will go to the F sharp. Now I've got an E and a B, but I need a G. That's good, so we'll return to the G for the E minor chord. And then we'll rise up to the A for the A minor. And then stay on the A for the D chord. And then come down, but this time to a G sharp. And that makes our E major chord. So you'll see there's much less movement visually, and let's see how that changes the sound of the part. And here's our closely voiced version. Bottom part. Uh, uh. Inside the heart of this troubled man There's an itty bitty boy tugging hard at your hand Born bitter as a lamb But you must understand You've been bringing me joy And I'll only lie when you don't want the truth I'm only frightened cause you finally gave me something to lose it's as loud as a thunderclap and you hear it too But now you're bringing me joy And that's the essentials of close voicing. So just treat each of the three parts of your triad as a separate singer, not wanting to move, and just where possible, just wanting to sit on the same note for as many bars as it takes.